Chris That Rock with Simpson Math. Let's talk confidence. Let's play a game. You guess how many candies are in the jar, you win it. Wow, Fatima wants those candies. She looks at it and she says, a hundred, there's a hundred candies in there. I want those candies. Please let me have those candies. Quinlan says, I'll, I'll share with Fatima. There's way more than a hundred. Heck, I could give her a hundred and, uh, and still have plenty for myself. So Quinlan slowly calculates the volume of the whole thing, the volume of the candy and divides. And he says there's 283 and he thinks he's going to get the candy. He's, he's, he's pretty confident. Katie watches Quinlan do his math and sees about five errors. So Katie says, I think there's 186 because all of his errors are estimated too high. There's secretly, secretly, there's just 201. Now, who's going to get the candy? Who's going to get the candies? Well, before the game is over, Jessica says, there's between zero and one million candies. Well, Jessica's the only one that's right. Everybody else is wrong. Jessica wins the candies. Hey, lucky for y'all, Jessica's nice. She's going to share. Now, the point of this little game is these estimates guessed by Fatima, Quinlan, and Katie, they're all point estimates. They use a single number, a single point on the number line to estimate the number of candies. Whereas Jessica, she used an interval estimate. She did an interval on the number line to guess the number of candies. Statisticians use interval estimates that they call confidence intervals. And the way they produce these things is they take a point estimate, like Fatima's, and add and subtract to that point and from that point estimate a margin of error. And that creates an interval because when you subtract, you get a lower number. And when you add, you get a higher number. So you go from the low to the high number. And this is an interval estimate like Jessica's. Now, the way you get the point estimate is your statistic from the sample, okay? So you gather up a sample, and if you're estimating a mean, then you get the sample mean, and that's your point estimate. Now, how do you get the margin of error? Well, you need it to be two SDs if you want it to be 95% confidence. We're just going to do 95% confidence intervals, but other types are possible. But if we want it to be 95% confident, we need two SDs, generally speaking. Now, it turns out that's actually not going to be true, as we will see when I get to the technical page. I think it's time for the technical page now. Now, for estimating means with samples, we actually use something called the student T distribution. There's an infinite number of these, and it depends on your sample size. So we learned from the central limit theorem that uh, there's a different sampling distributions. If I take a bunch of samples of size 30 and get all the possible sample means, I'll have a different sampling distribution than if I took all the samples of size 50 and took a, and computed all the possible sample means. So there's an infinite number of samples based on the infinite number of sample sizes you could choose. And so we call these the student T distributions of degrees of freedom of sample size minus one. And this is where we get our two, what we think of as our two, but it's not quite a two, which is why we're using a student T instead of a normal distribution. Um, we think of this as our special two, but it, the statisticians call it the critical number or the critical T. And we multiply it by our estimate for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. The standard deviation for a sampling distribution is called a standard error. So this is our estimate for the standard error. And the way we get it is we take the sample standard deviation, the sample standard deviation, and divide it by the square root of the sample size. And we add and subtract that to our point estimate, which is just the sample mean, and we have our interval estimate. Now, what is the critical T? Well, for your experiment, your sample, our sample size, your sample size is 10, so your degrees of freedom is 9, and if you look that up, it's 2.26 standard errors, or sampling distributions, um, standard deviations, 2.26 up and 2.26 down from the mean captures 95% of the measurements. So our 
special two or our critical T is 2.26. So you're going to get your confidence interval by doing this. You're going to take your point estimate, which is just your sample mean. You're gonna add and subtract 2.26 times your sample standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size, which is 10. So you're gonna take your point estimate, which is your sample mean, you're gonna add and subtract 2.2 from it, this product, which is 2.26 times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of 10. Math made simple at Simpson Math.